Section 11 of Beowulf by Unknown Translated by Francis Barton Gamere 30. That way he went, with no will of his own, in danger of life to the dragon's horde, but for pressure of peril, some prince's thane, he fled in fear the fatal scourge, seeking shelter a sinful man, and entered it, at the awful sight tottered that guest and terror seized him yet the wretched fugitive rallied anon from fright and fear ere he fled away and took the cup from that treasure hoard of such besides there was store enough heirlooms old the earth below which some earl forgotten in ancient years left the last of his lofty race heedfully there had hidden away dearest treasure for death of yore had hurried all hence and he alone left to live the last of the clan weeping his friends yet wished to bide warding the treasure his one delight though brief his respite the barrow new ready to strand and sea wave stood anear hard by the headland hidden and closed there laid within its lordly heirlooms and heaped hoard of heavy gold that warden of rings few words he spake now hold thou earth since heroes may not what earls have owned lo erst from thee brave men brought it but battle death seized and cruel killing my clansmen all robbed them of life and a liegeman's joy none have i to lift the sword or to cleanse the carven cup of prince beaker bright my brave are gone and the helmet hard all haughty with gold shall part from its plotting polishers sleep who could brighten and burnish the battle mask and those weeds of war that were wont to brave over bicker of shields the bite of steel rust with their bearer the ringed mail fares not far with famous chieftain at side of hero no harp's delight no glee wood's gladness no good hawk now flies through the hall nor horse's fleet stamp in the burgsteed battle and death the flower of my race have reft away mournful of mood thus he moaned his woe alone for them all and unblithe wept by day and by night till death's fell wave o'erwhelmed his heart his hoard of bliss that old ill-doer open found who blazing at twilight the barrows haunteth naked foe dragon flying by night folded in fire the folk of earth dread him sore tis his doom to seek hoard in the graves and heathen gold to watch many wintered nor wins he thereby powerful this plague of people thus held the house of the hoard in earth three hundred winters till one aroused wrath in his breast to the ruler bearing that costly cup and the king implored for bond of peace so the barrow was plundered born off was booty his boon was granted that wretched man and his ruler saw first time what was fashioned in far-off days when the dragon awoke new woe was kindled o'er the stone he snuffed the stark heart found footprint of foe who so far had gone in his hidden craft by the creature's head so may the undoomed easily flee evils and exile if only he gain the grace of the wielder that warden of gold o'er the ground went seeking greedy to find the man who wrought him such wrong in sleep savage and burning the barrow he circled all without nor was any there none in the waste yet war he desired was eager for battle the barrow he entered sought the cup and discovered soon that some one of mortals had searched his treasure his lordly gold the guardian waited ill enduring till evening came boiling with wrath was the barrow's keeper and fain with flame the foe to pay for the dear cup's loss now day was fled as the worm had wished by its wall no more was it glad to bide but burning flew folded in flame a fearful beginning for sons of the soil and soon it came in the doom of their lord to a dreadful end thirty one then the baleful fiend its fire belched out and bright homes burned the blaze stood high all landfolk frighting no living thing would that loathly one leave as aloft it flew 
Wide was the dragon's warring seen, its fiendish fury far and near, as the grim destroyer those gaitish people hated and hounded. To hidden lair to its horde it hastened a hint of dawn. Folk of the land it had lapped in flame with bale and brand. In its barrow it trusted its battling and bulwarks. That boast was vain. To Beowulf, then, the bale was told, quickly and truly, the king's own home. Of buildings the best in brand waves melted, that gift throne of Gaiots, to the good old man sad in heart. T'was heaviest sorrow, the sage assumed that his sovereign god he had angered, breaking ancient law, and embittered the lord, his breast within with black thoughts welled, as his want was never the folk's own fastness that fiery dragon with flame had destroyed and the stronghold all washed by waves but the warlike king prince of the wetters plotted vengeance warriors bulwark he bade them work all of iron the earl's commander a war shield wondrous well he knew that forest wood against fire were worthless linden could aid not atheling brave he was fated to finish this fleeting life his days on earth and the dragon with him though long it had watched o'er the wealth of the horde shame he reckoned it sharer of rings to follow the flyer afar with a host a broad-flung band nor the battle feared he nor deemed he dreadful the dragon's warring its vengeance and valor ventures desperate he had passed a plenty in perils of war contest crashed since conqueror proud hrothgar's hall he had wholly purged and in grapple had killed the kin of grendel loathsome breed not least was that of hand-to-hand -hand fights where heoluk fell when the ruler of gaiots in rush of battle lord of his folk in the frisian land son of hrethel by sword draughts died by brands down beaten thence beowulf fled through strength of himself and his swimming power though alone and his arms were laden with thirty coats of mail when he came to the sea nor yet might hetwaris haughtily boast their craft of contest who carried against him shields to the fight but few escape from strife with the hero to seek their homes then swam over ocean edge theo's son lonely and sorrowful seeking his land where hig made him offer of hoard and realm rings and royal seat reckoning not the strength of her son to save their kingdom from hostile hordes after heoloch's death no sooner for this could the stricken ones in any wise move that atheling's mind over young hard dreads head as lord and ruler of all the realm to be yet the hero upheld him with helpful words aided in honor till older grown he wielded the wetter gaiots wandering exiles sought him o'er seas the sons of otair who had spurned the sway of the skilfing's helmet the bravest and best that broke the rings in swedish land of the sea king's line haughty hero hence hard dreads end for shelter he gave them sword death came the blades fell blow to bairn of heoloch but the son of ongen theo sought again house and home when hard dread fell leaving beowulf lord of gaiots and githseat's master a good king he thirty two the fall of his lord was fain to requite in after days and to aya gills he proved friend to the friendless and forces sent over the sea to the son of otair weapons and warriors well repaid he those care paths cold when the king he slew thus safe through struggles the son of edgetheo had passed a plenty through perils dire when daring deeds till this day was come that doomed him now with the dragon to strive with comrades eleven the lord of gaiot swollen in rage went seeking the dragon he had heard whence all the harm arose and the killing of clansmen the cup of price on the lap of the lord had been paid by the finder in the throng was this one thirteenth man starter of all the strife and ill care-laden captive cringing thence forced and reluctant he led them on till he came in ken of the carven hall the barrow delved near billowy surges flood of ocean within twas full of wire gold and jewels and jealous warden warrior trusty the treasures held lurked in his lair 
not light the task of entrance for any of earth-born men said on the headland the hero king spake words of hail to his hearth companions gold friend of gaiots all gloomy his soul wavering death bound word full nigh stood ready to greet the gray-haired man to seize his soul hoard sunder apart life and body not long would be the warrior spirit and wound with flesh beowulf spake the bairn of edge theo through store of struggles i strove in youth mighty feuds i mind them all i was eleven years old when the sovereign of kings friend of his folk from my father took me had me and held me hrethel the king with food and fee faithful in kinship ne'er well i lived there he loathlier found me bairn in the burg than his birthright sons erebald and hothkin and Heolach mine for the eldest of these, by unmeet chance, by kinsman's deed, was the deathbed strewn. When Hothkin killed him with horny bow, his own dear liege laid low with an arrow, missed the mark, and his mate shot down, one brother the other, with bloody shaft. A feeless fight and a fearful sin, horror to Hrethel, yet hard as it was, unavenged, must the atheling die too awful it is for an aged man to bide and bear that his bairn so young rides on the gallows a rhyme he makes sorrow song for his son there hanging as rapture of ravens no rescue now can come from the old disabled man still is he minded as morning breaks of the air gone elsewhere another he hopes not he will bide to see his burge within as ward for his wealth now the one has found doom of death that the deed incurred forlorn he looks on the lodge of his son wine hall waste and wind-swept chambers reft of revel the rider steepeth the hero far hidden no harp resounds in the courts no assail as once was heard End of section eleven